I'd like to take some few minutes and uh, talk to you about understanding the ways of God. Understanding the ways of God. Understanding the ways of God. There are many ways in life. There is the ways of God and the ways of man. And God said, your ways are not mine, neither are your thoughts my thoughts. I have a way of doing my things, and you have a way you do your things, and it's different from my way. Even though you are made in my own image after my own likeness, we all have different ways of seeing things and of doing things, and God said, my ways are not your ways. Come with me to Isaiah, the 55th chapter, the 8th and the ninth verse. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are up higher than the earth, so are my ways other than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So God said, you have a way, I have a way. And your ways are different from mine, but you still have a way. And I also have a way of doing things. The decision and the choice is yours. Whether you're going to go God's way or you're going to go your way. Now, if you go your way, you take full responsibility of the outcome. And God says, you go my way, I take full responsibility of the consequence and of the outcome of what happens. In the book of Job, the Bible says, he knows the way that I go means he has set a path and a way for me in life. And when I'm tried, when I'm tried or tested, I will come forth as gold. Turn to somebody and say, God has a way for you. God has a way. Has a way for yes, sir. He has a way. He has a way. And one of the things that we struggle with in life is the fact that God does not tell us or show us everything when it comes to his plans for our lives. When I, when I moved here 30 years ago, if God had told me everything that was going to happen, and if he had showed me how developed this place would become from ShopRite to Sakumono Junction, I would have bought everything here. Oh, yes, sir. I would have been the richest man in town. I would have bought every property from ShopRite to Sakumono Junction. But he didn't show me everything. He just uh, moved the church from town and bring it here. And we lost over a thousand people to other churches in town because people will not come here. And the Lord said, if you move the church to that place, I will bring the city to you. I will bring the city to that place. He said it. I couldn't make sense of what he said, but I obeyed. <clears throat> And I didn't know what was going to become of us moving the church here. He does not tell you or show you everything at once. Because if he does, then you don't have to have faith in God. And you don't have to trust God. If God tells you everything, shows you everything, then you don't need to depend on him and you don't need to trust him. But there must never come a time in our walk with God in this life or in this journey of life where you don't need God. Turn to somebody and say, as long as you live, you will always need God. You. Yes, sir. As long as you live, you will always need God. And that is the way God has done it and designed it so that we are always dependent on him. That is the way it is. You can't change it. I wish God can tell me the outcome of everything about life. But the fact of the matter is that if he tells you and shows you everything, then you really don't need God. And then you don't need faith. But the Bible said that the just shall live by their faith. So no matter what you do in this life, you are going to need God. And there are many ways in life and many ways of doing things in life. And if I had my way, I would do some things my own way. Or like somebody would say, some way. But there's no other way by God's way. Tell somebody, there is no 
other way but God's way. Period. Yes, sir. No other way. Because no no if you go your way or you go any other way than God's way, there are consequences for that. Psalm 103 verse 7. Psalm 103 verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. You see, sir, Moses understood. He had an understanding and a revelation of the ways of God. Why is the children of Israel, they knew the acts of God, the wonders of God. I was telling some of our elders yesterday, I said, years ago, I was impressed by giftings and anointings, the acts of God. But I have come of age and I've become wiser and better today than I was yesterday that I don't care what kind of gift or anointing you have, if you don't have character to match the gift and to match the anointing, I am not impressed by your gift. You can't impress me by your gift anymore. I've seen too many gifted people, too many anointed people who are very shagaras. You heard what I said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting people. Very gifted. Very anointed. Can raise the dead. Perform signs and wonders. Very accurate in their prophetic giftings and everything. But the character does not match the gift. The character does not match the anointing. Very inconsistent people. You look at them and you ask yourself, where is this coming from? And I was telling... <coughs> Some of the elders yesterday, I said, <clears throat> if you're dealing with somebody prophetically, and every time they keep seeing evil devils, devils, evil devils, the source of the gift is not the Holy Spirit. Don't forget it. Never forget it. Because the Lord spoke to me and gave me an insight. I was battling with something. And he said, don't be confused, my son. He said, don't be confused. If the source... He said, this is how you know whether the source is the Holy Spirit or it is a different spirit. He said, if the revelation, the visions that keeps coming from an individual every time they bring you a prophetic word, it's about demons, evil, something negative, always negative, bad, negative, bad, negative, bad, negative, bad. The source must be questioned. You have to question the source. Because you see, if it is the Holy Spirit, it will be balanced. Balanced in the sense that there will be time when the Spirit of God will reveal and make known to you the plans of the adversary. What the enemy intends to do to you. Like Prophet Agabus came and revealed what was ahead of Apostle Paul. He does that every now and then. But then, if the source is the Holy Spirit, then there will be times also where there will be comfort. Prophecy comes, brings comfort, exaltation, edification, assurance, to assure you of God's plan for your life. But if every time it's bad news, negative, evil, and it's consistent every time, every time, you have to question the source of the gift. Never forget what I just told you. I've given you a key that will preserve you the rest of your life. I'm telling you. One time, a prophet came to see me, and he said, it's very, very urgent. I have to see you. So I said, come. So he came. And he gave me some very, very scary prophecy and when he finished giving me the prophecy, I said, That says the Lord unto you, O man of God. Everything you have told me is you. And everything you said to me is going to happen to you double. He said, No, 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 no. I reject it. And I said, You are rejecting it. And you expect me to receive it. So I said, it's not healthy for you. You don't want it. 
but I should accept it. You know, so I told him, I said, henceforth, eh, don't step in my office. Never come here. Because it doesn't matter what you see. If God wants me to know, he will tell me. He knows my name. Tell somebody, God knows your name. <clears throat> he knows your address. <clears throat> and so these are some of the ways. Because it looks like there is the tendency of every now and then people coming to bring negative prophetic messages to make you afraid and panic and put fear in you and that gives them advantage over you. You know, I was talking to a young prophet the other day and I said, a true prophet solves problems. You don't just come and say, I see a snake. And I said, okay, fine. You see a snake, but what is the solution to the snake you are seeing? If you see a snake, kill it. Say, kill it. Yeah. What do you do to a snake? You kill the snake. So why are you telling me you've seen a snake? Go and take, a, go and take something, kill it. Why are you trying to frighten me? And if you are not careful, these things can hold you in bondage. And there are so many people hearing me right now, home and abroad, in bondage because you don't understand the ways of God, the methodology of God and the way God does his things. So the enemy uses that to hold you at ransom. But Moses was not ignorant. Moses understood the ways of God. And the people were into the acts. They were into the wonders. They were into signs. They were into miracles. They were into, oh, he's sharp. He's accurate, sharp. But Moses wasn't into all those things. He was into knowing God for himself and knowing how God does things and the very ways of God. And as we mature in the things of God, you need to come to that understanding that God is not going to show you everything when you begin your walk with him. He takes his time to reveal and gets you to depend on him. There are things that I've been through and I'm going through. If the Lord had told me in the beginning, I wouldn't preach. I would have done something else. Lord have mercy. If he had told me some of the things I've dealt with and some of the things I'm going through, I wouldn't have accepted the call. I would say, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord. But I would do everything but to preach. I wouldn't do it. When we moved in here, if he had told me some of the contentions and the battles I was going to go through on this Pinkers Road with other churches and across East Legon, I would have said, Lord, you know what? Find somebody else. Forget it. But he never tells you. When he called Moses and said, go bring my children from Egypt and here, at the feet of Mount Sinai, they will serve me. He didn't tell him about the Red Sea. He didn't tell him about the ten plagues of Egypt. He didn't tell him that Pharaoh will, Pharaoh's heart will be hardened. He didn't tell him that over 300,000 chariots and horses and footmen will pursue them into the Red Sea. He didn't tell him any. He said, just go and bring my people. You see how simple it is? Go and do what? Bring my people. He didn't give him details. And as time went on, wherever he got to, God was there. He was already there. He always goes ahead to show us the way and to give us the solution. He has the solution with him, but he's not going to give it to you till you need it. And hear me. He said, follow me and I will make you. Nobody becomes anything and nobody is made anything in God if you are not a follower until you follow you will never become he only make those who follow Bishop come follow me yes, sir. he's following me have I told him where I'm taking him to I saw him. 
Follow me. Tell somebody, follow. What is he doing? Have I told him where we are going? By his word. Yeah. He's not going to tell you where he's taking you to. But he says, I know the plans and the thoughts I have of you. They are of good and not of evil. To give you what? An expected end. So what? Keep what? Keep what? Yeah, just follow. Follow. Why are you taking me through all these corners? I'm what? He said what? Uh -uh, follow. He's following. And I haven't told him where I'm taking him to. Just follow. Who has the plans of where we are going? I do. He has no clue. He has no clue of where we are going. His job is to what? Hear me? I've been following him over 46 years and I'm still following. I wish, I wish I wish he would download even between now and 31st December some things I need to know that he has on his mind but that is not the way he operates he wants us to be totally and absolutely dependent and reliant on him on what? daily basis say daily basis and that is where my struggle is that is where your struggle is because you want to understand you want to make sense you want to know somebody said if he can just tell me then I will have faith that is not faith if you understand if you know then it's not faith but it's faith when you don't know and you don't understand, you can't make sense of it, and you are battling. Somebody said, Papa, do you also struggle? Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I struggle about so many things. I question so many things within myself. I don't take it to him. I just battle it out myself. And then I say, okay, you the boss, whatever you say, I surrender. But that is what it is. And as long as you leave, you and I, will never come to a place in our walk with God where you don't need him on daily basis. You never come to that place. We are always going to need him. He's following me. Uh, he still doesn't know where I'm going to. But I'm taking him somewhere. Tell somebody he's taking you somewhere. You know, I was telling somebody the other day when I was in America that uh-huh. But he didn't fall. <laughs> Amen. And I was saying to the person, I said, I can appreciate. Thank you. You can take your seat. Now, watch this. I can appreciate certain delays in some things I expected from God in America at a particular time and it never came forth and I fasted and I prayed and you know me binding, loosing, commanding, overturning, decreeing, overriding, uprooting, overthrowing and it still didn't happen then recently I was in America and all those things began to happen in a very powerful way. Then the Lord said to me, now you are ready for it. Amen. 
When? When are you ready for it? Yeah. And I said, but, but what was the reason for the delays all these years? And he said, because you were not ready. You were not mature. You didn't have the wisdom, the understanding, and you weren't wise enough. And if I had given it to you, you would have destroyed it. And I said, you mean all these years me? I'm not wise enough. I'm not mature enough. Then I realized who I was talking to, so I shut my mouth. Because God knows us better than we know ourselves. You might think you've come of age and you are spirit. And God said, no, 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 no. And then something had happened and someone came to see me for a favor. And I listened and I looked through and the Lord said, this is why I delayed the blessings. And I said, why? He said, because before you would have given the blessing to people like that and empowered an enemy against you because you were not ready for it. So I had to delay for you to become mature and become wise before I gave it to you so such people don't come and exploit you and take away a blessing that does not belong to them. I just said something. I just said something heavy and it will take some of you weeks, months, days, years and others decades to get what I just said. Because it's not everybody you empowered and it's not everybody you bless. There are some people who are cursed and you leave them alone. You don't touch them. I didn't know that. And years ago the Lord said, I have touched your tongue with the cold of fire. Don't curse anyone that I have blessed and don't bless anyone that I have cursed. It took me years to understand that. And I realized that over the years, I have blessed people I shouldn't have blessed. And I have spoken against people I shouldn't have spoken against. And we all fall short of understanding and of the knowledge of God. And the Lord said, I was in America, and he said to me, he said, son, you were not ready for some things, so I have to delay some covenant blessings because you weren't ready for that. And now I can entrust you with it. And I sat there, they came and they went, and they needed certain favors and keys I had, and I will not release it. But before, I would have released it. Because before I acted by sympathy and compassion, and I don't do that now, I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, listen, do nothing, leave it to me. i handle it. The ways of God is serious. Moses, Moses, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in Sinai, another 40 years after discovering and understanding his mandate and mission, he had 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in searching to understand why he was born. He discovered his purpose and he had another 40 years to fulfill it. May I announce to you that you will not die until you discover God's plan for your life. And two, you will not die until you fulfill his plans for your life. Stand on your feet, lift up your hands. We want to pray that prayer right now. Lift both of Say, I will not die until I discover God's plans for my life. I will not die. And say, I will not die until I fulfill God's plans for my life. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, put your hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. 
You may be seated. Romans 11.33. Romans 11.33. All the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are, thy, are his judgments and his ways past finding out. His ways past finding out. You can't make sense of it. But you just have to keep following. Look at Abraham. Go to Genesis 12. Look at Abraham, Genesis 12. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, uh -huh. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred uh -huh. and from thy father's house uh -huh. unto a land that I will show thee. Unto a land that I I'm showing you now. No, sir. I'm showing you now. No, sir. But I what? I will show I you. I what? I will. Follow me and I will. Make you. Follow me and I will. Make you. Nobody is made anything in life and in God until you follow. And the most difficult one is following without knowing and understanding where he's taking you to. I'm telling you, there's somebody sitting here right now and the Lord has shown me something about the person that the person has no idea of. And then he said to me, you don't have to say anything about it. Just watch and see. Watch and see. If she will follow and I will make her or she will miss it. And I wish I could just tell the person that hold on. But my instruction is don't say anything. Just watch and see. But this is the plans I have for this person. And this is where I'm taking the person to. And I will show you the role you will play. But you don't have to reveal my plans. I'll tell you something. Most delays in our lives, no matter what it's of, is a result of failing the test. Did you hear what I just said? I, I've said something very heavy. Most of the delays, most of the things we call delays, like for instance, I was dealing with a lady. I was dealing with a lady. And she's been believing God to marry for years now. <clears throat> And I asked her, do you know the type and the kind of man you want to marry? She said, yes. And when she finished, then the Lord said to me, she is not ready for the man she wants. She hasn't developed the capacity to marry that man. And if she marries that man, she will become an opening or an instrument in the hands of the enemy to trouble and to frustrate my will for the life of that man, even though she's not a witch and she's not a demon. She's a child of God. But you know what the problem is? She hasn't developed the capacity and the character and she's not yet become the material necessary to marry the kind and the type of man she wants to marry. It's a very serious thing I'm telling you. One of the reasons a lot of marriages are not working is because people just want to marry. I want to marry. I want to have sex. I want to have kids. I want to make babies. I'm growing old. I must marry. But you must ask yourself. You must understand God's plan for your life. Because if you don't know the plan God has for your life and where he's taking you in life, you go and marry a man or a woman who is a believer. They are all, you are good and he is good, she is good, and yet they are not the material for you to fulfill your mandate and the call of God for your life. And that man will become a thorn in your flesh. And that woman will become a thorn in your flesh. These are things people don't talk about. Oh. Oh, just get married, just get married. It's not about just getting married. Have you developed the capacity 
to be the wife or to be a husband to that individual. The difference between Vashti and Esther was this. Vashti just married for marrying sake. She had charm, she had beauty, everything. She married a king, but she wasn't the material to be married to a king. Not everybody can marry a queen, and a king, and not every man can marry a queen. There are some women who are queens and princesses. And there are some men who are princes and kings. And not every woman, because you're a woman, can marry them. And not every man can marry them because you're a man. You have to be that necessary material. Because if you are not, you become a thorn in their life and you will frustrate the will of God and you will delay the plan of God. And many people's destiny have been put on a hold because they married someone they shouldn't have married and they are marking time and they are stuck in life their businesses cannot take off. The aircraft which is destiny is grounded and your aircraft cannot take off because you are not ready to fly it. It's not the fact that you are lonely. And it's not about something is wrong with you. And it's not about how no one is looking at you. You haven't passed the test. You are not ready. You are not ready. You see, the Bible said, a man called his servants. And to one, he gave five talents, which is money, not ability. To another, he gave two. And to the third one, he gave one. And here, what the Bible said. The Bible said, to everyone, he gave them talents according to each one's ability. Say ability, ability, ability. That stands to reason, logically, that the one that had two did not have the ability to manage five talent. And the one that had one talent had not developed the ability to manage two. Now the one that had five, through exercise and diligence and vigilant, developed the ability to manage ten. And the one that had two developed ability to manage more than two. So it's all about developing capacity for where you are going. And the problem in the church is, we just take the scripture as it is, I want my breakthrough. I want my blessing. I want favor. God did it for this, do it for me. And we harass God and do everything even though we haven't developed the capacity. Years ago, I had a friend of mine. He's a preacher. He's going to be with the Lord. Very wealthy guy. And he came to visit me. I used to live at East Lake Hall. We were sitting by the pool eating. And he said, Nick, I realized that you need some money, you need cash. And I said, yes, brother, you're right. You are a spiritual man. You are deep. You are a prophet. You are a prophet. And he looked at me and he smiled. And he said, I want to give you a million dollars. And you can pay me back within a year or two, no interest. But you got to pay me back all my money, not in bits. Give you a million dollars, you pay me back within a year or two, no interest. And then he said to me, what will you do with my million dollar? And I said, give me some time to think about it. As soon as I said that, he said, no, I am not going to give you my money. I said, why? He said, no. If you are not going to think about what to do with a million dollars, then you are not ready to handle a million dollars. So I will give you a gift of $100,000 when you come to America, but my million dollars, I ain't giving it to you.
How many of you here are ready to handle one million dollars? Stand on your feet. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking. The million dollars can come to you. I said, how many of you are ready to handle a million dollars? Are you sure? Yes. Hear me. This is a test. Though. I'm not joking. This is very serious. A million dollars. Now, if I ask few of you, what will you do with one million dollars? You will see the response here. You, when you hear the response, you can tell those who are ready and those who are not ready. Now, see now, let me tell you something. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to embarrass you. Now, for those of you who stood up and said you are ready for a million dollars, do you have a plan written, a plan written of what you will do with a million dollars if you are given a million dollars tomorrow? Don't sit down there and say yes, because you can't lie. We are in the house of God. We are in church. Thou shalt not lie. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says liars will not go into heaven. Do you know that? Yeah, if you check Revelation, liars will not enter heaven. I think one of these things I should make you see the qualification of entering heaven and the people who will not enter heaven. Fornicators, adulterers, liars will not enter heaven. So if you're a believer and you lie, you are not entering. It's there, it's in the book, I'll show it to you. This thing is a very serious thing. Though. This walk with God is no joke. So you want a million dollars. Do you have a plan of what you will do with a million dollars? Have you handled a million dollars before? If you have never lost money, you can never have money. If you have never failed in running a business before, you will never be successful in running any business. Why are you looking at me? I'm talking to you. Amen? Because, you see, we have a lot of things mixed up, confused, and so people are disappointed, discouraged, frustrated, all kinds of attitudes towards God and in the church. And it's not God's fault. It's because you haven't been well taught. If you want a million dollars, are you a tighter? Are you a tighter? And how many years have you been consistent with your tithes? Because tithing is part of the ways of God. When God says, take 90 and give me 10, it doesn't make sense when you look at it from the ways of men. How God can instruct me to keep 90 and give him 10, but according to the ways of God, is the 10 that sanctifies the 90. So if you go by the ways of men, it does not make sense. Go back to Abraham. Look at Genesis 12. Uh -huh. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, uh -huh. unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. Uh, he, he said what? I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and uh -huh. make thy name great, uh -huh. and thou shalt be a blessing. So look at the plans. But God never told him. Now, he said, leave. Whether by air through Kotoka International Airport, or by Aflawu border, or by the sea, he didn't tell him how to leave. Can you imagine that God tells you, pack all your things, leave Ghana. But he didn't tell you whether you should fly out of Ghana. By land, by sea, he just says, get out of Ghana. So when you read the Bible and you hear of these men of faith and heroes of faith, you must understand what they have to deal with. 
God never gave him the details of the plans, how he should live, whether he should go through Bolgatanga or north, south, east, west. He said, do what? Leave. Do what? Leave. Do what? Leave. Leave. Tell somebody, the command is leave, leave, just leave. leave, leave. Uh -huh. And he said, when you leave, I will what? Make you. When you leave, I will what? I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. And follow me and, and I will make you. Just follow. Leave. Go to verse 4. So Abraham departed mm -hmm. as the Lord had spoken unto him. He what? He departed. He departed. Uh huh. As the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Aaron. He departed. He left. No sense of direction. If you just want to be married, it's easy. If you just want to be blessed, the devil also can bless you. Do you know that? The devil can bless you. Go to Luke 4, 5 and 6. The devil can also bless you. And there is good success and there is bad success. Look at it. Go and ahead. the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed him unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Uh -huh. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So the devil also gives kingdom, he gives power, he gives glory, he gives riches. And it's not every blessing that is a blessing. Turn to somebody and say, be careful what you call a blessing. Because there are things that the devil can give you, and you think it's from God, but it's a setup, it's an ambushment, it's a trap, and it's a snare. I'm telling you. I've had a lot of things given to me and the Lord said it is not yours. Don't take it, don't receive it, don't use it, give it to somebody else. I've had opportunity to be given Rolls Royces twice and the Lord said no, don't receive it. It will bring you problems because I've been there before. When somebody gave me a Mercedes Benz many, many, many years ago, I have a sister here right now. I won't mention her name because she doesn't like being made reference to and that Mercedes Benz gave me so much problems and the Lord warned me and said this Mercedes Benz given to you is going to bring a lot of pain and problems for you and the church and I have never had a Mercedes Benz before I was broke and I won't let the Mercedes Benz go and I kept it and the Lord kept saying Brand new Mercedes Benz. Brought it into Ghana for me. And the Lord said, this Benz will create you a lot of problem, my son. And I won't let it go. I held on to the Benz. And he said, this is problem. It's not a blessing. And everybody was thanking God for me. Papa, we are very proud of you. Your car, your car, your car. Everybody was proud and happy for me. But that was a trap. The rest is history. Some of you are young, so you have no idea of what happened with that Mercedes Benz. The rest is history. And I learned it's not every blessing that is from God. Because you see, if the devil knows that all you want is a Mercedes Benz and you backslide, he will give you Mercedes Benz. If he knows that all you want is a wife and a husband, and you will stop serving God and following God. He will give it to you. Go to Joshua 1.8. Look at Joshua 1.8. Look at Joshua 1.8. This, this book, book of, of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm -hmm. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, uh -huh. that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Uh -huh. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, uh -huh. and then thou shalt have Good success. What is the opposite of good success? Bad success. So if there is good success, there is also what? Bad success. Yeah. So there are people in this world, in this life, who are successful, but their success is a bad success. It's a bad success because of 
how they went about it and the way say the way the way the way through which they got that success is bad success they undermine others they kill others they sabotage others they forcefully took something from others that didn't belong to them it's a success but as long as God is concerned his word bad success so don't be impressed with everybody's success sometimes people tell papa you know this person is loaded and has a lot and I just look at them and I pity them I'm not impressed with too many things so yes I am not impressed with too many I've seen too much to be impressed with what people call success because I've seen the devil making people successful and making them believe that it's from God but it wasn't from God it was just a matter of time and they realized that the success were from the devil and not from God for the exchange of their soul and the exchange of their salvation if he knows that all you want and the reason why you are serving God is for a breakthrough and it's for success he will give it to you and you will stop following God. He will give you the reason why you've come to church. He will give it to you. And after that, your search and your worship of God, it's over. How many of you have written your will? Give me a wave of if you've written a will. Okay. Only if you, some of you, you will never die. Methuselahs. But you got to have a will. And I'll tell you what a will will do. A will will make you sober. It will make you sober. Two, it will make you think. Because some of you are not thinking. Three, you will reflect. You are not reflecting. And for some of you, it will make you realize that you are not going to be here forever. And for it to prepare you for heaven. How many of you want to go to heaven? Give me a wave of it. You want to go to heaven? Are you sure? If you want to go to heaven, write your will. Yeah. Because when you begin to write your will, you will start thinking about eternity. And you will start watching your lifestyle on earth and thinking about how you do things, how you treat people, and you start looking at the qualification for heaven. Because a lot of you, you are not looking at the qualification of making heaven. You are just staying here, living here, wanting to break through here. You are more concerned about your image, how people see you, how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to be successful, how you are going to break through, how you are going to make it. You are not eternity-minded and conscious. So you are violating the requirement for eternity once you are living. And you are not even aware of it. You are taking too much for granted. Write a will. Plan your funeral service. You are looking at me. I taught you faith. And I said to faith add wisdom. To faith what? Add wisdom. Do you know the queen? Plan her own funeral and even chose the hymns and everything that was sung. The queen planned it. From the first time she became queen, her funeral was planned. What happens when London Bridge falls? Everything was planned. And you are sitting there looking at me. You don't have a will. You are unwise. When you write your will, you become very wise. You will begin to live differently. You will see things differently in life. And all this vindictiveness and fighting and quarreling and having issues with people and following material. Listen, your desires in life will change. Do, do, you, do you hear my preaching for some time now? Are you hearing me? Do you hear my preaching? My attitude about so many things have changed. I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Here, even if you don't call me Archbishop and you call me Brother Nick or Pastor Nick, eh, it still doesn't matter to me anymore. You know why? Because titles don't matter. You know why they don't matter? 
I want to go to heaven. Are you hearing me? I am not preaching for more power, for more anointing, for more success, for breakthroughs, for blessings. You can be blessed without serving God. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Bill Gates, there's a lot of people who are not born again, who are loaded. Warren Buffett and a lot of them are not believers, but they are loaded. So you don't have to serve God to be loaded. We are serving God to fulfill the plan for which we were born and at the end of it all, so we can make eternity. If, hear me, if after all this coming to church, tithing, giving offering, serving God, fasting, praying, and everything, if at the end of the day, you miss it, then what was the reason for serving God? Are you hearing me, somebody? I don't want to miss it. And I don't want you to miss it. And you can miss it. You can be in church and miss it. The, the ten virgins, five were wise, five were foolish, but they were all virgins. I want you to be wise. I don't want you to be foolish. Are you hearing me, somebody? Stand on your feet.